welcome everyone. I'm Bruce Schwartz. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for connecting with me. Listen up, guys. I'm going to explain it once again. And <laughs> we're in slower detail. We're close up now. Now we're going to see this black craft that we saw in the last, last video a lot closer. And I want to show you it's not just three lights that we saw in the last video. I really want you all to see all of the detail. Look as we're approaching what is going on. And you see now in this whatever cloud, there are more than one craft. There are actually five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten crafts or objects. They're going to disperse. Um, and they disperse into smaller and smaller and smaller objects. Look around them and you will see objects dispersing themselves. There we go on the left. There we go on the top. Keep looking. It's intriguing because there are hundreds by the time we get to the end of this short frame that spit out or move around on the surface or away from this. Now look what's happening now. Oop, lights are appearing. One, two. Whoop, three on the right. Keep watching. It's pretty interesting. Four, five on the bottom right. Look at them appear. I don't need pointers to show you guys, right? The white lights. But say to yourself, I slowed this down. So that flash was like a strobe light. Quick. Do you understand? I'm explaining myself there. We're right inside of Archimedes Crater. These are clouds or smoke. Underneath, you're seeing structuring and color. Look what's going on. It slowed down immensely, and you could see the object or objects. Either way, look what's happening to it. It's dispersing a blast, whether a blast of an energy field that we can't read it could be another wavelength this is what i explained in the last video look at it look at the lights that appear now watch all over the surface the oh, black dots now different sizes right oh appearing disappearing um you're seeing colors a lot of colors on the surface you're seeing waves and waves of clouds going up and down this is in a short frame to give you an ideal of 3.5 seconds to 11 seconds I slowed down 11 seconds to make exactly almost uh, a minute and 40 seconds of footage. Okay, I'm going to try not to screw this up. This is a very important part. This is a UFO that is now over the cloud cover, and the cloud cover is over the buildings underneath. Watch what appears underneath to the bottom left of the black speck on the right there. There, a black speck over top, and three lights white lights also everywhere else over top and throughout the entire image other lights are moving and appearing on the surface and look how long it takes the lights to go out because i slow this frame down six or seven times this was as fast as a strobe light so these three lights flickered went on and off and i saw the flash i thought it was one object a long beam and it wasn't it was three lights and as i'm going over the surface i can actually see the color green colors. It's no jokes. And you can see building tops or objects, whatever, appearing on the surface that look that were actually constructed. There's a pipe on the bottom there under the UFO. Look at the bottom top, uh, top right, uh, top left. Look at the lights appear on the bottom right. We're going to look at it in slow motion now. Now we see more of the objects on the surface everywhere, even outlining. It's pretty incredible. Dots appearing here and there, black specks um, growing and getting smaller, disappearing descending different directions that they're going and the one drifting here to the right people are telling me why is everything going in the same direction nothing is going in the same direction look at the surface now a bit more clear these beautiful lines that you are seeing is the veil that's what you're seeing the lines scribble all over the television there's something obstructing the view of the moon it's not my screen guys try to understand that there really is a reason to hide what is up there and this is why we're seeing objects that way this is why the objects on the surface of the moon have the same reflectivity as the surface leaving us to believe that there's nothing there unless we zoom in and add contrast and enhance it and once you do that you zoom in you clarify it if you can keep the quality you can actually see structures now, I know many are interested about Clavius Crater in the southern highlands. We'll go see that right now. And look at the structure inside of Rutherford Crater. I'll get an hour up. This is the crater we're going to see up close. 
my telescope has an HD benefit to it, and this is where we're going to see its benefit. Again, zooming up on Clavius Crater, but this time closer, and the footage completely turned around compared to the last video. As we're zooming up, again, concentrate. This is Clavius Crater, where you see all these one, two, three, four, five, six, all the craterlets, they call it, because this is Rutherford, across from Porter. I'll get a light up on Porter. Craterlet is right here. Now keep your eyes on this crater here as we're zooming up. There's a structure inside and it's not in the Wikipedia. We can't see it in Wikipedia, we see a black line. Look at that structure. Look at that spherical object on the end of this tower-like object. Right there, all these objects appearing, you see the reflectivity that they have, the color they have? They're not being seen by telescopes and this isn't straight up footage. A couple months back, not that long ago, many people, other channels too, started capturing things in the sky. I caught many asteroids and unknown celestial objects, we'll call them UFOs in reality, because asteroids could be UFOs unless they're actually uh, confirmed UFOs. Um, I found this beautiful blue object beside the moon. Now, no matter what the color may be of it, I'm gonna say blue because of course I picked it up as blue. But it was an unknown celestial object. It was startlingly large. Now these objects, guys, came through our solar system or, don't forget, we could have seen these objects outside of our solar system, but that they are so gigantic that they seem to be pressed up against the moon or us. These are things that scientists themselves always have the biggest troubles with. And it's understanding and finding out at what distance and at what size these celestial objects are that we are finding. These objects appeared beside the moon, and when they did, of many different colors, many different anomalies were happening and occurring around them, we were seeing a lot more UFO activity. These unknown celestial objects, look at the light burning on top, the round spherical fire or whatever it may be, there's a line going into the fire. It's a pure product of all the chemicals that are interacting. Unknown celestial objects in stars and or cooling dying stars have amazing interactions of gas on the surfaces. Some could be totally lethally deadly. And it's not a wonder why some of them were being observed as they were passing close to our solar system because it could be dangerous for our health. When you think of it, we don't know what these objects or metals, I mean, everything's burning. Everything's interacting at high, high velocity temperatures. Guys, just a little mention, um, my videos, uh, something's wrong, I can't post them or feature them anymore. Um, I have no uh, customization access to my YouTube channel since the last two videos. I'll let you guys know what's happening because I, ha I hear a lot of you in the community, thanks for the feedback, by the way that are telling me that you're having problems posting um, or subscribing, that the notifications aren't coming in. There's a lot of problems coming up. I don't know what's going on, but thanks a lot for the feedback. You know, um, not to start something, uh, panic or anything, but if you are having a lot of repetitive problems, uh, please feel free to leave it in the comments and uh, I'll see what I can do because um, there is a major problem with my computer. Unknown celestial planets, guys. You can't say that this is not mesmerizing a dome object in the center of the planet and the only one I can see it would be very fairly huge because this planet was far away near Draco constellation. This is what many did not appreciate when I posted it about five, four or five months ago. See the objects that are around the moon? They're not all constellations in the far background. The ones pressed up against the moon and inside of the color here, as you'll see, I'll Zoom up a little bit more. By shooting light on the moon, it brings out all the colors around it and it destroys us from being able to see the moon, right? But look what it gives us. And this is what I'm making you understand. Look in the colors and look around it. All the celestial objects a few months back when the asteroids were, even NASA were telling everyone. Oumuamua came uh, about a month after this and just before all this activity was there. And these are all the, um, anomalies and the proof I've gathered in these photos by shooting light with my light technique, bringing out the beautiful 
um, images in the darkness that not many people are understanding and or appreciating or understanding why I'm doing it at all. It's showing us the proof. Sometimes we need to show a picture that is not necessarily beautiful to look at that just gives us basically the proof that we're looking for to look even deeper into what is out there. Vegas star Alpha Lyrae in the constellation of Lyra. Look, it's on top. A photo I got and nobody believes me that underneath it's connected to this beautiful massive nebulae. And look at the tunnel of gases inside of it that we can see right into it, which, by the way, was not um, dim enough for us to see inside. I've dimmed it down. This is extraordinary work, and it's giving us a raw view, glimpse of uh, the past. Because the further we get out there, guys, the further back into the past we are going. And we're going to see a lot of things that are going to astonish us. What people cannot see or what people have not seen in history books, people often think is not true. And that's not necessarily true because what I'm finding when I found Vegastar, all the beautiful details around Vegastar is not written in most of the history books. And unfortunately, because I'm not a scientist and because I have no credibility, sometimes these things go unnoticed. But I'm sure the ones that are coming here, and do believe me, are profiting from seeing these beautiful views. I promise to bring you many, many more. Now we're going to see many celestial objects that I've found also soon coming up. We'll be beside the sun. Um, here's some more objects. And, and again, when I say an asteroid, south side, bottom of the moon, it's where I saw it. It doesn't mean it's an asteroid. It could be a planetoid that's very far away. See, again, it's the distance. I just want you guys to understand when I say I found something near the moon. Well, it's in the moon's vicinity, okay? I'm seeing it in the moon's vicinity. But of course, the blue celestial objects that we've just seen uh, halfway through the video is an object that was actually almost pressed against Earth and the moon because it was at the bottom side of the moon, south side, and almost in front of it. So enjoy the next few um, beautiful live clips of the sun. When you're seeing movement of objects, guys, it's live. This is a photo. You can tell the difference. I know I have many different techniques, but I always say and um, what I'm doing. So just take a look at these beautiful images and you're going to see that planet, that red planet. Many were calling it Nibiru. I'm not going to lie. I never called it Nibiru once on my channel. People were even upset with me not calling it Nibiru. I did not know what the name of this planet was, but it was looking purple or red when it went by the sun. I filmed it live footage. It's very emotional for me to have filmed it because it's the first celestial object I see appear during my filming with an actual sun filter. And you're going to see this later on. I'm going to put up some music with this. These are objects, by the way, I'm pointing out that I'm finding in the dark with my technique. And look, there was another smaller object. It's the detail, right? Trying to show as much detail as we can. New subscribers, newcomers, and long timers. Thanks a lot for the support. This is interesting. These are objects that exist and that have come either close or that were very large and were seen uh, for the first time close to the solar system, either in or out of it. It remains something totally interesting. We heard NASA as the, the ones that were here know it. Every time I found something, it was scary. It was like 15, 20 times NASA was talking about it on the news. Scientists were, are finding thousands of planets and I'm not lying, thousands, I think over 2,000, 3,000 planets have been found in just the few recent years. We're talking about water now on different planets. And here it is, the sun. Take a look at this footage, guys. I'll put up some music. Another video coming up right after this.